Welcome back to Hannity and Combs. I'm Rich Lowry in for Sean Hannity tonight. We continue now with John Bolton. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, tell us a little bit about the relationship between Her uh, Iran and Hamas and what Iran's long-term strategy is in this conflict. Well, Iran is one of Hamas's uh, main funders, and it's been a supplier of arms and equipment and training over the years. Uh, and this, this is important because uh, Hamas is basically a Sunni Arab group, and Iran obviously is Shia and, and Persian. Uh, this is a demonstration of the reach, the scope, the power that Iran has in the Arab world, uh, and why we're looking at potentially a multi-front war here, not just in the Gaza Strip, but potentially uh, by Hezbollah, the terrorist group in Lebanon attacking uh, Israel from the north, as it did in the summer of uh, 2006, uh, and indeed the continuing Iranian quest for nuclear power. So while our focus obviously is on Gaza right now, uh, this, this could turn out to be a much larger conflict. Now, uh, Mr. Ambassador, in your view, how does the equation change if and when Iran acquires a nuclear weapon. You know, if the if the uh, region's inflamed now and in conflict now, how is it different when uh, Iran acquires that uh, that extra bargaining power, if you will? Well, I think it gets gets much much worse. The, their their ability to threaten and intimidate Israel and the uh, Arab states in the region obviously substantially increased. Every problem in the region that we have now gets worse once Iran gets nuclear weapons, and I'm afraid we are ever closer to that point. I think, uh, sad to say, the Bush administration's uh, efforts following the lead of the European Union have uh, entirely failed, and I don't think there's anything at this point standing between Iran and nuclear weapons other than the possibility of the use of military force, possibly by the United States, possibly by Israel. I don't see the Bush administration doing it, so it could well come down to Israel. And that's why uh, the role of Iran here in inciting this Hamas violence uh, could be important, because I think we are playing on a larger chessboard. In your estimation, does Israel have the capability to take out Iran's nuclear uh, program in a way that would be enduring enough to make it worth the price and the risk? Well, I think it's a very, very difficult question. The use of military force against the Iranian nuclear program is a very unattractive option. It's risky. Uh, it's going to provoke a reaction. The, the, the reason it's on the table is because the alternative of Iran with nuclear weapons is much worse. I think Israel uh, could destroy enough of Iran's program to give us three, four years, uh, which, which puts time back on our side to look for a longer-term solution. But it's a very, very unhappy situation to be faced with. What does all of this tell us about the power of negotiation in the Middle East, Mr. Ambassador? Because you pointed out President Bush uh, kicked off the Annapolis process. We're now on the verge of another war anyway. Bill Clinton, you know, twisted Israel's arm and got it to agree to withdraw from a lot of the territories. The uh, uh, Yasser Arafat launched the Intifada anyway. It doesn't seem as though it gets you very much when you're dealing with such an, uh, an implacable foe. Well, he, here's the thing for people who think negotiation is the solution to everything. Sometimes nations or groups have irreconcilable objectives, and I think in many cases that's what we see here. In terms of negotiation with Iran, for example, our friends in Europe have been negotiating for over five years to try and dissuade from giving up uh, its pursuit of nuclear weapons, and they have failed. That's why we're in the desperate position we're in. As far as Hamas goes, I don't know how Israel negotiates with a terrorist group. How, how do you get them to live up to their their commitments even if they're willing to make them. They had a so-called ceasefire with Israel for six months that they, they routinely ignored. Are they going to solve it militarily? Well, I don't, I'm not sure that they can solve it militarily at their current rate of speed. I don't know what Israel's uh, real objective here in the Gaza Strip is. Uh, I think that this is a circumstance where the pursuit of the so-called two-state solution uh, has come to the end of the road. I think uh, the, the one thing we need here is for countries like Egypt to take up uh, their responsibility and perhaps reassume sovereignty over the Gaza Strip and try and bring some order there. You said you don't know what uh, President Obama will do. If it were up to you, would you go and take out Iran's nuclear facilities right now? I, I would use military force against Iran's uh, nuclear program, yes, because I think that the world gets a lot more dangerous once Iran has nuclear weapons, and not simply because of what Iran might do with them, but because of the very nature of proliferation. If Iran gets nuclear weapons, other countries in the region and the wider world will judge they right, need so them as would, well. So you would strike Iran right now? 
I, I would have done it before this. I think we're in a very dangerous position. I think at this point, as I say, there's nothing that stands between Iran and nuclear weapons. And if they get them, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, possibly Turkey, possibly others in the region will get them, and the risk of somebody using nuclear weapons will rise dramatically. Right, but is there a risk, if, you, if we were to do what John Bolton, and Ambassador Bolton, is saying he would do, is there a risk in pushback in that by going after Iran, we introduce an even broader powder keg in the Middle East? Well, I think you've got a much worse situation with Iran with nuclear weapons. I'll say it again. I think the use of military force against Iran's program is very unattractive. But compared to Iran with, uh, with nuclear capability, I think you have to look at it. So if we do that, they strike back. Are we then in, in danger of creating a broader war? Well, I think in many Arab states in the region, uh, although they wouldn't say it publicly, they'd be doing the equivalent of popping champagne corks because the Arab states don't want Iran with nuclear weapons any more than Israel does. What, what Iran could do is what's already happening in the Gaza Strip or what might happen if they unleashed Hezbollah, terrorist attacks on Israel. That's why the calculus for Israel's leaders at this point is so difficult because and so complex uh, and so risky. But whatever their circumstances now, they are far worse with Iran with nuclear weapons. All right, Ambassador, we thank you for coming on tonight. Thank you for your time. Coming up. If this were a dictatorship, it'd be a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> Just so long as I'm the dictator. <laughs>